Okay, that don't uh, that don't happen too often. I'm ready to watch uh, Tom Brady, and then I get a message from a minister um, stating how come I didn't interview him last week. I was going around t tackling a politician and the legislator, and I wanted to know how come. How come they, uh, what they say, they preserve preserve 4.5% of the forest and now they put it up to 10%. So I said they got to be a catch. There's two Irving employees in the Premier's office. Uh, what's the catch? Can you say election? I mean, there has to be a catch. There's no way that this will be allowed. So I got this note on uh, just 10 minutes ago. From the minister, minister of forestry, minister of forestry, is it, is it forestry? Anyway, so he wants me to give him a call. He heard that I, how come I didn't tackle him? So I said, what's your phone number? So he gave me his phone number and uh, we're going to give him a call. It should be good. He likes to talk, uh, just like me. Hello. Minister. Monsieur Leblanc, ça va? Ça va bien, toi? Ah, c'est très bien, très bien. You speak better. Well, you speak better French. And you speak better French than Blaine Higgs, but, but, <laughs> uh, but that don't say much. Okay, so uh, Good Good I, talk to you. I haven't heard from you in a while. I know you've been hiding. Working. Oh, is it is it working? Been working. Been working. Okay, so I've been ha tackling politicians last week. You weren't around, and asking them what's the catch. But I hear that. Ten, you uh, you must have heard that at, at, at the convention. No, I'm a faithful follower of Charles LeBlanc and his, and his blog. So See, they got to be an election. <laughs> if you praise me, they got to be an election around the corner. <laughs> Charles, uh, uh, there's no uh, correlation between what I'm doing and election. There's people at different places than me that make those determinations. But I've been working on this since before I got elected. You've been working on this before you were elected. Okay, so how did you manage to get the okay from two Irving employees in the Premier's office to put... Well, you got to understand, this is an initiative that's been born out of, uh, out of our very platform. Like, when we ran for election, we had... Actually, it's the first time I think I've ever seen... I could be wrong, but I have never, ever, ever seen a conservation piece in a in an election platform before and i wrote it in the pc platform way back before before i was even a candidate i said it's very important that we have a conservation plank a forestry plank in there that is multifaceted and and takes into consideration a variety of different factors so that's why we said the review and revision of the crown lands and forestry act working on uh more open access for uh, private wood to the marketplace uh, habitat uh, you know, and wildlife uh, focus uh, that has never been done before. So, so I don't know. I don't know. We could have an election tomorrow, or two years from now, or or whatever. But uh, are you but, trying? I, are you? I'm letting you talk there. Are you trying to maybe say, okay, we're save, we save ten percent. Uh, next spring, there's going to be a huge flood, huge flood, because of the clear cutting. Work I'm doing now, and it's important to keep in mind that the work we're doing, and over the next 14 months, we're going to identify where these areas are. And, and you're right, sensitive watersheds, sensitive. What areas, did you just? What, what did you just say? Uh, I'm right. Yes, I have no problem. Are you? Excuse me, Mr. Holland. Are you drinking on a Sunday night? No, no, it's a school oh. night, so there's oh, drinking. Okay. But I, not the first time I've told you you're right, uh, and. And, and sensitive areas are going to be a big and major focus of this. And not only is it a focus, 
conservation groups are the ones that are going to be helping us sitting at the table. First Nations are going to be sitting at the table. Uh, the New Brunswick Wildlife Federation. And that's what's never been done before. Okay, so what's the catch? The catch is that it's the right thing to do. I don't, I don't, no, no. Sure. Come on, come on. You got a nerve, uh, you got a nervy premier there. And there's no way in the world. Did you hang up on me? Oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, I didn't. In fact, the premier stands strongly behind this, and he re referenced it at our AGM. And if you if you spoke to him tomorrow, he would speak very favorably about the work I've done and the homework I've done. As minister, did you go in a helicopter and go around around the province where the clear clear cutting is? Oh, I've been all over the province, absolutely. Have uh, you been see. over the sky and looked at all the clear cutting? I've seen yeah, I've seen forested area, I've seen clear cutted area, I've seen I've seen it all. There isn't a square mile of the province that I haven't viewed in one shape in one some way, shape or form. So it's they, bad. Is bad. I see all these log trucks. I go up north. I see all these log trucks coming and flying, and at night the roads are being destroyed. Well, see what we're doing, Charles. You got to keep in mind here is that is that this is a this is a model that will require uh, a collaboration between conservation and industry, and they can both live in the same world. Um, there's 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 New Zealand did an incredible job with this. There's other jurisdictions where conservation didn't play um, second fiddle to, to, to industry because we have the ability for both to survive. And, and honestly, conservation groups have not sat at the table to talk about how we can look at habitat, how we can look at wildlife populations, how we can look at sensitive areas. And and it, it can be done, and, and we're we're going to prove that. Do they spray? And, do they spray in, in those country countries? There's some that do, and some um, don't. And 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 the the bigger picture to look at is when this when this all fleshes out. What I've announced is the equivalent of the addition of 19 Fundy National Parks worth of conservation area in the province of New Brunswick, and then when you combine that with the areas that are already in conservation, that's gonna be the equivalent of a piece of ground, not on one spot, but, but a land mass the size of PEI that we've brought into conservation here in New Brunswick. That's a lot of food in the fridge for wildlife, let me tell you. That's a lot of habitat that's protected. That's a lot of sensitive waterways. That's a lot of floodplains. Now the key is, you know, it takes you three months to grow a garden. This is, this is a longer term vision. When we protect an area, you know, we're going to have to work on cultivating it for that conservation. And this is a long-term plan. We're going to see some immediate results, I hope, but there's also going to, this is for the future as well. This is for, this is for people that aren't even born yet to be able to put their feet on, on good ground in the province. Yeah, but how can we do that with that secret for, forestry act deal that David Allward and Pedro Michaud signed? Well, that put uh, that put crown land in 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 industry, and that that supplies wood for them. Uh, oh yes, it sure does. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I had do. I had a worker from the Chipman Mill that pulled me aside and said, Charles, this was last year, a year and a half ago. Charles, you got to let the public know what's going on. I'm an employee of the mill. And we're scared shitless of all the trees that's coming in. I mean, we're scared. It's just cut through, right to the states, right to the states. And, so we, and it's crazy. Well, what we've got is we've got an opportunity here with, um, with the, with the, there's allocations there now. And if they stay within their annual allowable cut, that'll, that'll feed industry. But we're talking about an expanded land base above and beyond that and getting creative with it. I mean, the difference is, is that, is that we, Governments have never placed a priority on the conservation side of things, and, and we are. And it could have been done in the past. It just it just wasn't a, wasn't at the same level of priority that it is for for Premier Higgs and for myself. I'm going to put. I'm going. To, uh, by the way, how 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 was the annual meeting? It was actually tremendous. The atmosphere was was phenomenal. In fact, one of the highlights for me was uh, having a chance, uh, myself and Minister Jeff Carr got to speak about the importance of an environmentally responsible approach to governing. And I was very proud of that, actually. I had my father there. He's been going to those for a long time, Charles, and I can't tell you how, how much it meant to be able to talk about making meaningful difference in New Brunswick with him and the crowd. How come nobody invited me? 
Well, I'm not on the invitations list, my friend. You know that I would have had you there. I would have been there. You know, I, I'm, usually, I'm usually always there. We get drunk on Friday night and <laughs> go in a hangover on a Saturday. Maybe that's why. David, I, would have got, I got too drunk. It was all over the place. <laughs> It wasn't a secret. I mean, yeah. I, I know, I know. I, I didn't. I was lazy. Listen, I'm going to put you on the spot. You can always do that. I can, I'm going to put you on the spot on the big, big giant. You're a target. My God, I chose you before Tom Brady, the football game. I have to get 11 minutes. But I, I, I think that what I've done in the province of New Brunswick here is Super Bowl worthy, so. Well, let me put you on the spot. We, uh, you are the MLA, you're the minister. What's the big secret in Moncton to not disclose where the Legionnaire disease happened? I don't have a clue. Like, Charles, you know I never shy away from a subject matter. I've seen some stuff in the news, but honestly, you know, I'd defer to the Minister Fleming or my colleagues in Moncton, perhaps, but I don't know. Now, I can only, I can only make an assumption is that there's a certain amount of caution that's involved to stem the spread of something but once again i'm a redneck from albert county and not a physician so you'd have to get some information from some people smarter than me on that my friend pretty good pretty good on a sunday night that's a good political answer <laughs> well the citizen needs to be protected isn't the government supposed to protect the citizens well i mean uh i'm and trying to do a good job of protecting our natural environment and I know that my other colleagues are equally as committed to the portfolios that they've been given. You're so. telling me politely change the goddamn subject. Oh. Huh? You're telling me politely change the goddamn subject. <laughs> uh, I could read between the lines even over the damn phone. Geez, not, not bad for a guy that hasn't been around this world for a while. Ah. <laughs> not bad at all. So that's the bottom line. You were on the hot seat for what? There was the for the this thing here and what was the other issue? You were on TV twice. I was on TV. There was like I did half a dozen interviews in the last couple of yeah, days. Yeah, what was there was two issues. What was the other issue? We were talking about uh, I'm getting old. Uh, me too. Me too. I talked forestry, forestry, forestry. And then I talked about boneyards. Yes, that's it. That's it. So what's yeah. with this what's with this boneyard thing? Anyway, so I know roadkill you gotta put it somewhere. Uh, how come yeah. they just don't dig a big hole? Well, you don't have to dig a big hole. Where they got them now, Charles, is like nobody's going for a walk with their dog and tripping over one of these uh, disposal sites. Are you trying? Are you trying to tell me that CBC uh, are bored? No, CBC takes a you know takes a pretty in depth approach to their stories, but this one, uh, I don't think there's a, a heck of a lot to talk about there. I think it's. It's good to know that, um, you know, we, we are responsible with that and we're not going to leave stuff laying around. And So how many is there? Seven? No, there's more than that. I think there's a couple dozen of them around the province in different spots. So I've, I've, I've been to them. I've seen them before. I've never seen them. Yeah, well, I'm in the woods a lot, right? So I'm bound to trip over them. So Was the reporter uh, um, acting when he was going... <coughs> He was just choking, and well, was that a little I, bit of drama? Uh, you know what? I got a pretty strong stomach, so they've never made me gag like that. But just throw a steak in your fridge and walk away from it for two weeks. <laughs> yeah. Multiply that by a significant amount. They, they, they're pretty right, that's for sure. Really? Yeah. So everything's so, fine. No, I like, the election should be called next week. I, like I said, I'm not involved in election readiness. Uh, I've been head down in the department. Uh, I'd also know that in addition to that, i got to do uh, a, a lot of work. When I'm done my duties in the department, I go right back to Albert County and, and the Albert Riding, and I, uh, I, I work as much as I can there because at the end of the day, I was hired by the people of the Albert Riding. So I'm working hard that whenever an election's called, that, you know, if they look at my report card, they can say, you know, the guy worked for him. Is somebody going to challenge you during the uh, nomination meeting? <laughs> I'm, re I'm ready for it if they do. I mean, at the end of the Payback. day. Payback is a bitch. <laughs> Charles, at the end of the day, if, if 
I wasn't ready for it. And if I didn't, <laughs> I, I'd be pretty hypocritical, wouldn't I? Joe, yeah, just for the record, uh, you were the only one I was shocked that you were former executive assistant for social development, development uh, welfare, and then you uh, challenged, what, what was his name again? Uh, Brian Kirsten. Yeah, and plus I didn't know him too well, so that means he was pretty quiet. So uh, you challenged him during the nomination meeting for the PC for the, to run as a PC candidate, and uh, you won. You won by, by how many votes? A significant amount, we'll yeah. say. The, no, the nomination meeting, people could, 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 if they get the people to go there, and you know, you could do some changes. Listen, I'm telling you what, when, when, when people make a decision to act, things happen. And I didn't, I didn't enter the world to be, um, to be a, uh, a bystander. You know, I've been around this world for a decade now, and, and I never once felt like I would want to be unproductive. That's why uh, I'm so proud of the portfolio I have. I love it. I love every minute of this job. And, 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 and when I'm done, because guess what? There's another Minister of Natural Resources coming. We know it. I'm, and I'm not naive enough to know that somebody's not going to get one more vote than me someday. So in the meantime, I had better make a difference. So the preserving of the 10%, uh, is this mostly buffer zone by the river? or? Well, that's going to be a big part of it. I, I actually, being from the Miramichi, I would like to see us do a significant amount on sensitive waterways up there, sensitive uh, tributaries, um, buffer zones. There are certain areas. There are certain areas where buffer zones could be significantly fortified. Love it. I want to. I want to do that. Um, there's, and, and I want to see it done in a way that connects the land mass of the province. Because you see, it's one thing to protect an area for wildlife and give them habitat and food and shelter, but if you can then connect that to other areas in the province, that's a that's a, a, a natural and very organic way that over the course of a few years, they'll have a chance to, to migrate within those areas and have more habitat, which will allow more growth of the population. Let me guess, you're going to do a protect, you're going to protect the area of the town of St. Andrews so they could have <laughs> lots of deer. <laughs> well, they haven't need a lot of protection to be, uh, to be there, but I have made some good strides with the uh, town of St. Andrews. I, I met twice with the deputy mayor down there and and we made a couple of uh changes to help with the increase of the harvest numbers there and i'm and, and this will this will certainly help because yeah we'll look in areas around uh high density spots like that to preserve some areas that can give animals the the pathway to get um uh to get, to get away from the, the the urban areas but the, the problem is is that you know People put food out too. We gotta get the people to stop in the field. They're so cute. Yeah, well, you know, they are cute, but uh, there's a couple of factors there. They cause problems potentially with traffic. Um, there's ticks. Um, and, I mean, some people put a lot of work and effort and money into their uh, um, garden, flowers, everything. Their landscaping and stuff like that. Yeah. yeah so. Nobody, nobody disagrees that it's it's smart and the right thing to do to to either harvest them or to create ways for them to naturally migrate to more natural areas. Why don't we uh, Why don't we take them all and uh, gather them up and put them all on uh, on uh, Deer Island? Well, I mean, then you're basically just transferring one habitat problem to another area, and on an island would be even worse because the carrying capacity would be limited. And then, then you'd have uh, a situation with starvation or potentially disease going through them, and nobody would want to see that. Either. I'm going to be an ass. You still smoke? What's that? You still I smoke? Don't have, I don't have any bad habits anymore, Charles. No, no bad habits anymore, boy. Thank God. Is it cloudy outside? The lightning will go right through, <laughs> right just, through my window here. Uh, get, since getting elected, I've been able to eliminate all of my bad uh, habits. Yeah, no, that's where you're supposed to get some really bad habits after you get. Uh, uh, I like no, I've actually I've lost weight. Um, I, I sleep better. Uh, I've never been so busy. I work like twelve hours a day for a joke, but I've never I've never felt better in my Good. life. Good, I'm glad. Did you walk up Mount Carlton? 
I, I have, not since getting elected, but I've been up Mount Carlton, yeah. yes. I have been up, I, I did it once, about five, six years ago. And so is that going to be an area that's going to be preserved? I guess you go up there now and you see clear cutting all over the place. Well, Carol, there's, there's, there's some areas protected there now, and there's, there's certainly more we can look at. But Mount Carlton is the highest elevation in the province of New Brunswick. If yeah. you stand up there, you can darn near see Miramichi. So, yeah, you're going to see clear cuts up there. And and I said it, the, the CBC didn't fully uh, do my interview, but I said, you know, I manage for waterways, for habitats, for stuff. But I don't manage for viewways. And you get up to an elevation like that, just potentially you're going to see some, some clear cuts. But when, when, when I'm getting the work done where these protected, or sorry, these sensitive areas are getting protected, that's when I start thinking. Okay, now we're making headway. So you and you and Jeff are a good Jeff Carr, are a good good team. Jeff Carr is a good friend of mine. I've known him for years. Jeff Carr and I are a couple of the only MLAs that came up through the system. As uh, we started out as volunteers, we yeah. started out as regional vice presidents, and and we've been in the trenches for over a decade. Uh, I'm newly elected, but I'm no rookie, and I've been around a long time. And Jeff's been there right alongside of me and he's one of my uh, best friends and trusted allies. So of all the praising you give yourself and all that, there's an election being called next week? No idea. I don't think, I, actually I don't think so. I mean I could be, I could be wrong on that but um, uh, I, I don't I don't think so or I don't see it. If, if it is, I'll be the first one to come back on and say yeah, you were right, I was, I was a what do you say, an idiot? I, 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 you're just you're just a Facebook away. Twenty one minutes. I wonder who's still watching this. I don't know. Are we Facebook live? No, we're not live. I'm just saying. Oh, okay. I'm going to put that on. It's going to be online online in about twenty minutes. I don't know who would have the patience to sit and listen to. See, in the legislature, they have to listen to me on Facebook. They can turn me off any time. So I don't know. <laughs> they don't have to listen to you at the legislature. Trust me, they can turn the channel pretty damn quick. Uh, I'm talking about the people in the chairs. Once they get in the chairs, it's pretty hard. They might, they might get up and go for a coffee. By the way, is that a scandal with NB Power? NB Power with the... Uh, Florida thing? What? The, the company uh, in Florida that's supposed to be a scam and blah, blah, blah. Well, I'll tell you. Here's And I've been clear with the media, and I've done a number of interviews about it. Um, I am basically getting briefed and brought up to speed on on all of the information i have been clear i did not put the money into that oh that's uh, right you're the minister of that right yeah yeah oh I'm yeah that that was the issue okay sorry continue yeah okay so is it a scam what's going on i've been very clear from the beginning and and, and i and i don't say this to throw anybody under the bus uh, I, I i get along really well and work really well with all the parties but it was the previous government that put that money in. Uh, we didn't, and I'm not putting another dime in. I stood up and said, you know, this is this is something that is uh, is a. It, I have no evidence that indicates that this is viable. So until there's evidence to the contrary, there's not another dollar of uh, of government money going to go into. No, I hear that, but somebody so that NB NB Power is run by the board of directors. And Gaetan yeah. Thomas, he's the CEO, but somebody, that, that must have been quite a con deal to be approved. You make a good point. I'm the minister responsible for NB Power. I'm not the minister of NB Power, which means my role is I'm, I'm an advocate for the ratepayer. First and foremost, I want to see NB Power provide reliable service at a good rate um, without interruption. Now, there's lots of challenges there and lots of work I'm doing there. Uh, as it relates to the the initiatives, they have a capital budget and they have an operational budget that's generated from from the ratepayer. Yeah. And there's a certain amount of that stuff that I'm not directly involved with. However, in the situation of this, there was government money that went into it in the past, and and I clearly indicated that there will not be government yeah, money going. Yeah, we know it. that. But how did it go there in the first place? I mean, how was it accepted? Is well, there going to be an inquiry? I mean, there gonna... It, it was an initiative of government. Now, not my government, and somebody's going to come after me and say, well, I yeah. make decisions they didn't agree with. Yeah. This one, 
Um, so are you going to investigate? Not, are you going to say, okay, well, how did this happen? I'm in the process of unpacking all that now. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I have questions that I've gotten answers to, a number more that I don't have the answers to yet. Um, I'm, I started the meetings uh, as of... Uh, I've been getting briefings all along, but I've actually reached out to ensure that uh, Friday I ended with meetings, and, and it's on my agenda this week to have some, some very specific conversations about um, where we where where we got to here but more importantly you know where we're going from here because it has to be responsible i'm not in favor of anything any department does that doesn't offer a return on investment yeah it just it, it reminds me of the uh, what, what they call it there the simpson the uh, the, <laughs> the train there what was it <laughs> yeah i can't think of the name what was it the song uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> midway, midway, can you say it? Boom, boom, down in Florida, and here we go. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I just, uh, I mean, uh, I'll just leave it to the fact that my message has been clear all last week and going forward. Um, but you're going to give us an update. Uh, trust me, this is pretty big. If it's a big scan, if it's a yeah, scan, if you, want, if you want to check back with me, give me give me a week. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is, like, and, this, yeah this, this is like this. This is like this could be like the Briex uh, gold mine thing. There, there wasn't. Uh, remember that Briex? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. No, yeah. I mean uh, <laughs> now. I mean, I've 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 given NB Power, uh, you know, an opportunity to 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 come to the table with information that talks about viability. I mean, I, I we've all seen odd investments that do pay off or long shots yeah. that do pay off. Uh, so what I've done is I've tried to take a balanced approach and say, you know, if you if you got a evidence or an indication that that we've got viability here, yeah. I need to see it. I haven't seen that yet. And over the course of the next week, um, there's quite an urgency there to get information to me. There's a lot of PC PC members during the annual meeting ask you questions about this? Uh, you know what? A couple of discussions here, but the, 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 the forestry initiative and the conservation initiatives that we're doing, that really took up the bulk of the conversation for sure. All good. Minister, yeah. thank, thank you on. very much to uh, lower yourself to talk to us peasants on the Sunday night. When when have I never made time for you, Charles? <laughs> oh, there's an election around the corner. <laughs> you're you're kissing my ass big time. <laughs> Whenever, I'll I'll kick it too if you if you get out of line. Don't worry. I know there's a line. We cross it sometime, but we go back. You're trying to find out about this legionnaire disease. I I got an email. You gotta love social media. Somebody told me exactly where it was. And I'm not going to go make it public, but uh, I think the government should make this public so people could relax. Maybe, maybe you could investigate, and maybe you could sit down and have a watch, watch Ted have a cigarette, and you could drink your water and discuss the issue with Ted, with Teddy. I was do, I was doing so good. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're always doing great. Don't worry about that. So have I'll a good day. Share that with my colleagues. Talk to you later. Cheers, man. Bye bye. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. So here it is, Legionnaire. Maybe we'll find out uh, where exactly where it is. The Forestry Act sounds good, and uh, NB Power. So I could continue to watch my start to watch my football game. All good, all good.